Hello and welcome to Motors for the Masses and today I'm back on the Peugeot PM01 but rather than just a review because I've obviously done that already I'm taking it on a longer journey to see how it fares at consistently higher speeds how it tackles uh, in terms of comfort um, what it does up hills whether it slows down um, and just in general whether it would be any good as a decent commuter bike and I don't just mean like a typical 125 potter or rounderer so let's roll the intro and get cracking So hopefully this will fare as a decent bike uh, not as I say just to um, potter around and do in and out of town stuff but consistently higher speeds that uh, you can do a good 30-40 mile commute on um, what we don't want is a 125 that uh, isn't really going to cut the mustard uh, now I'm back on this bike it certainly feels nice and light and nimble again uh, I'm in sixth gear it's coming into a 50 mile an hour zone and I'm held up by car traffic how good is that it is uh, a November day it is cold it is a little bit windy but uh, not horrendous but there's clear blue skies and it's coming towards the uh, mid afternoon so I'm hoping to see what it's like coming back in the dark as well. It'd be nice to see what these lights are like in the dark. I'll do a bit of country riding on the way back. Um, hopefully in the dark just to see how they fare on those roads. Um, see this is what frustrates me on a lot of roads. It's a 50 mile an hour limit and we're doing 37. I mean what? Why? It's been sunny all morning but I've been busy and there's been clear blue skies and now the clouds are coming in, it better not rain. No my luck it'll rain. Don't like rain. As well you know. And uh, fans of Eddie Izzard and his uh, old stand-up comedic material should know that phrase. As well you know. Unfortunately, um, Eddie has uh, kind of uh, lost it in his uh, later stand-up comedic roles and uh, now he's just uh, no idea all very political I think I mean this is not a rocket, don't get me wrong I'm not doing 45, still not doing 50 yet <laughs> um, 45 miles an hour, 6th gear and 6,000 RPM does feel very light and nimble very easy to flick around this bike unbelievably simple feels very light on the road very light indeed what I want to make sure is that when I sit on the 60 mile an hour roads on a flat that it will sit at 60 and keep up with traffic top speed on paper as you know is 62 miles an hour and on my uh, original test I did manage to get 67 but that was on a dual carriageway with a slight decline in the road so it'll be interesting to see when we get onto this next bit that's 60 whether I can hit 60 if the uh, VW Golf at the front will allow as such I was around about a quarter mile ahead better slow down to 40 seriously Turn left, turn left, turn left, Mr. Golf, turn left, Mr. Golf. No? Okay. Oh, 
sure he is. Well, I might be able to get past this one then. Again, I'm not being uh, gender specific here, but uh, you know, quite often happens. So sixth gear, 53, I'm pinning it. 53, 54, come on. See, this is where I feel let down in um, one, two, fives in general these days. The inability to hit 60 on a flat straight road. Oh, come on. Oh. I'm going to get 60 now in the drag of this van. No, he's going to sit at 50. Look, you're a car derived van mate, you can do 60, not 47. Oh. I do find myself getting frustrated on the roads these days. It's not just people doing just under speed limit, it's people doing more than 10 mile an hour under the speed limit, it's just not necessary. Oh, he's found third. Come on, I'm in his drag, so that's helping me. I'm not going to be able to slingshot past him. No, slow down. Oh. Boring. Right. Let's forget about the speed, see if we can come to that later. Let's just enjoy the ride. So, almost 60. I'm not getting any vibration through the handlebars. Oh, this is, this is what people annoy me. They speed up, they slow down, they speed up, they slow down. Just sit at a speed. And you're going to go straight on, aren't you? Turn left, turn left to the roundabout. Turn left at the roundabout turn left at the roundabout nope maybe not go So yeah, what was I saying? Well, yeah, no buzzing feedback through the handlebars or through the foot pegs. Um, I'm getting a bit of crosswind, but it's not really pushing me off balance. It's doing fine, to be honest. Uh, I suppose you could argue that, uh, is it gonna keep up with daily traffic? Yes, it very much is, because no one drives to the speed limit anymore. And I know you're thinking, it's not a target. Yes, it is. When you're on a 125, it is a target. The 60 mile an hour limit is definitely 100% a target. No. Goodbye. Now, if I sit at 60 and this guy's up my ass now, I will not be happy. Right, so I'm glad he's gone because we're now in sixth gear doing 55 and we've got a hill. What's it going to do? Fifty-three, fifty-two. 52. Will I get 50 up the hill? Well, 
it's sitting at 50. Don't go to 49. Okay. Well, it held itself at 50. I'm determined to get 60 on this road. <laughs> take it way up in the revs I don't really get much of a buzz I get a tiny buzz from the foot pegs when I'm hitting 9,000 rpm but that's it into sixth gear at 55 and then it doesn't really do anything else sixth gear is pretty pointless let me just give it five gears change the gear ratios but then of course you don't get the uh, fuel economy I literally got to 55 in 5th, put it in 6th and did nothing! Now, this is not having a go at Peugeot. It's having a go at all regulations regarding 125 motorcycles. And that is that you've changed the liquid cooled, you've got your CO2s down, you've got your 6 gears, but it makes no difference, in fact it makes it a lot worse on the performance of the bike and for a 125 people need to be doing 60 consistent 60 holds it there going up a hill holds it there on a straight I mean look I'm pinned I know I'm 100 kilos but I'm pinned I've got a slight crosswind and I'm doing 55 look it won't 56 57 because I've got a slight downhill now it just won't 58 oh hello come on come on 59 come on yes 60 we've got 60 and, and that's it come on no that really is it <laughs> I've got a downhill and I'm coming up to the drafting section. Oh, 61. We'll be going on some dual carriageway in a little while, so we'll see if we can get it past that. But as I say, I mean, as a keeping up with general traffic, yes, it does. Does it keep up with general traffic on a dual carriageway? Well, again, if people are driving at 60, possibly. If they're driving at 70, no, definitely not. I mean, this pootling around lark at um, 45.50 that a lot of people seem to be doing these days, it's ideal. So I suppose you could argue from that point of view that it's perfectly adequate. Not a great word to use, is it? Adequate. I'm going to cut now to the dual carriageway piece. because This is going to get boring. I've got another 15 miles to go yet till I find the dual carriageway. Out here in the um, arse end of... Uh, nowhere so uh, stay tuned and i'll be back very shortly with some dual carriageway i want to say blasting but let's be honest it's going to be um dual carriageway testing oh i mean now it's warmed up a bit it's better on the pickup again i'm in the draft of a van which does help but um yeah i mean as a um pick up and go you you haven't got traffic sitting behind you waiting for you so that's a bonus anyway back shortly Well, I hit 64, 
that wasn't bad and I managed to get some decent speed up coming up the slip road overtaking a couple of slow vans so that wasn't too bad unfortunately I've now got a van so that's the only thing you've got to plan your route on a 125 I want to get in his slipstream get down the hill come on oh yes I can feel it dragging me <laughs> Oh, come on, I've got to hit 70. I'm not laying down, not on the tank. No, I'm not doing it. Yes! 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 70 downhill on a dual carriageway in the slipstream of a van. Can I get past the truck? That's the thing. Oh, I've got to go uphill now. Uh. Oh, 65, still doing it. 63. Oh, oh no. He's alongside me, 60. I got past him. Thankfully, um, he obviously struggled getting uphill. <laughs> He's got a heavy load, I think. But I did it. Okay, now I'm stuck doing 55 because the uh, truck is in my drag. Come on. 56, that's it. Starting to creep up. 57. Pulling away from his drag and getting in the drag of the next truck. Will I be able to slingshot past it? Let's see. I'm going to give it some. Traffic slowing down. What's going on? Okay. Now this is where a small, nimble, light bike comes into its own. Because you can just do the... okay. Watching out for people like that. But you can gingerly filter. Oh, Jesus Christ. That's why. Bloody rubberneckers. Good God. How the hell? Oh, that's only just happened. Good God. I hope they're okay. Oh, my God. There's another one there. How far did that go then? Jesus Christ. That's not good. Well, we're back to a downhill. 62. BMW slipstreaming. Dare I? Yes, I dare. It's a learner, I'm getting past him. 67. I'm past him. Now, can we do 60 consistently going uphill? Now the bike's nice and warm. It is performing a bit better, I'm feeling. I mean, look. I'm doing 60. Going uphill, on a dual carriageway. Now the bike's warmed up. Okay, prove me wrong, 59. Come on, pin it. 60-ish. <laughs> but it's not bad. In terms of 125s these days, it's not bad. It's not amazing. But it's not bad. Now what I want to try and do is find a different route back. Um, by the time I come back it might have gone actually. Back to 60 again. And oh, we were doing okay. So I think at the moment it's not really causing me much of an issue as far as um, being a commuter is concerned. I do have 
a slight cross stroke headwind. Now, I want to come back down this dual carriageway simply because I will have the wind behind me and I want to see what difference that makes, if any. I will be keen to find out. So we'll do that after we've done our little journey. We will come back on the other side with the wind behind us. But for now, look, I mean, it's quite stable. I can sit here quite happily. It's not wobbling about. I've got no fears. That's pretty good. Again, 70 would be better. But 60 is okay. Shut up! Why do you have to do that? I said 60 is okay, and you go, alright, I've 50, all right, 58 then. Give me 60 now. Thank you. <laughs> well, at least that's one thing you can do when you're only doing 60 mile an hour on your carriageway. You can make up your own games. So as we pull off onto a single track. One thing I do find with this throttle is that it goes a long way. So open, shut off. That's quite a long way to go on the throttle I think. So when you change gear, you've got to do that with it. Otherwise you get a little bit of a revving thing going on. But on these back roads that are 50, 60 mile an hour, pootles along very nicely. Great little blast around the country roads, that's for sure. I have to see myself rolling off the throttle now because it's going a bit too quick. It's nice, it's fun, I'll give it that, it is a fun little bike and it feels very good quality, nothing feels rattly, nothing feels like it's going to fall off. Oh, 60 now, let's see what we can do. Nothing feels cheap, nothing is sort of bouncing apart, it is holding itself together really nicely. And I know that's a weird thing to say because obviously you're on a bike that's uh, propelling you along at 55, 60 miles an hour on a good day and um, you want it to stay together but what I mean is it doesn't feel inferior in any way it feels very good, high quality well, I am very pleased with the feel of the bike just need a bit more speed if they can find a way to bring the uh, emissions down but still keep the speed up then we're laughing bring on e-fuel that's what I say the alternative to petrol and then hopefully that'll keep the emissions down and they can start boosting a bit more power back into things unless of course they do what they say they're going to do and by 2030 get rid of all 125 combustion engine bikes anyway in which case then your only option is electric Yeah, it's very enjoyable now. Very enjoyable indeed. Suspension holds up on the bumps pretty well. I have no idea where I am or where I'm going. But it's uh, fun finding out. Very nimble and easy to whip around these corners. I've been saying to myself for the last sort of 10-15 minutes pull over and just make sure the camera's still filming okay but I can't because it's, <laughs> it's too enjoyable and bearing in mind the plethora of bikes I have to go blasting on I'm quite enjoying this little 125 and that's not because of the speed that's because of how well made it is and how nicely it rides 
Yeah, very nice. Very nice indeed. Now, where the hell am I? Oh, back out into the 60. I was going to stop there, but... <laughs> <laughs> oh look at that, isn't that lovely? English countryside, can't beat it. Right, I'm now coming up to the dual carriageway going in the other direction. And I'm going to go from a standstill and I want to show you how much better this accelerates now it warms up and how quickly it gets up to speed going uphill. I mean, bearing in mind we are going consistently uphill. We're up to 50 already. I'll change gear at 60, shall I? Well, that's not bad, going uphill. Now what we're going to do is see what kind of speed we can get up to now that the wind is slightly behind us. I want to be able to do 70, that's my target, to do 70 uphill once we're wound it up. Coming to a slight downhill now. 64. Come on, girl. Sixty-seven is what I had before. I mean sixty-seven's okay, I'm happy with that. I think this bike is listening to me, I know it is. Get a bit of draft and slingshot past there, shall we? Nothing behind me. <laughs> That's the only thing with the 125, it's a planned event. Now I have right of way, so you can bloody well wait. You're fucking kidding me, you dickhead! What a prat! I have fucking right away, dickhead! Unbelievable! Oh, honestly! What a knob end! He's certainly not coming past me, he's hanging back. I think he knows what he's done. Come on, downhill! <laughs> As I say, it's a planned event on a 125, but it kind of makes it fun. So with the wind behind me, it's not making a massive difference. I'm not going to do the laying down on the tank thing. I mean, it's doing okay. I mean, the main purpose of this test was to see how it fares as a commuter bike on a longer journey than just in and around town. And come on, I want to overtake, get past. I didn't want to ease off. <laughs> and you can do it. I mean, that was quite a, a hill, and I did go down to 55, but I mean, 55 is not bad. And I'm now on a straight, and I'm consistently doing 63. I'm quite pleased with that. I can see the uh, brake lights coming on, that must be for that accident that still hasn't cleared. But again, we're on a bike, and sensibly, in stationary traffic, we can filter. I 
And I have noticed as well that when I left um, 51 miles ago, I had one bar more than I've got now. So it seems to be doing really well on fuel as well. All right. Let's gently go through these. Are we going to encounter any people that don't like filters? Filterers. As long as you do it sensibly. Oh, hello, what's that? Something they're going to turn into a hot mud, maybe? Oh, it's quite bad. It's all backed up here, look. Now, being on a small, nimble 125, as I said before, everyone can go faster than me, except in conditions like this. Oh, thank you, they're pulling over for me. Obviously, they're pulling over for the emergency services that they need to come through, but it helps me. Nothing in my mirror, so there's no emergency services on their way. Hopefully they're all there, and everyone's been dealt with. It's never nice seeing an accident. This is a lot of traffic. Ambulance sitting in the traffic. Oh, I see, they pulled over for them. Oh dear, fire. That means someone's got to be cut out. That's never a good thing. There's a Ferrari up here. Yeah, Ferrari California, is it? Or something? They all look the same. F12, is it? F something? Wow, this is a lot of traffic. See, this is what I like about the British people. They all come together. someone needs to get out of the way they get out of the way what they do need is a bike in front obviously I'm not making a suggestion what I'm saying is they do need a bike in front to get people to pull over so they can get through this traffic a hell of a lot quicker rather than just people moving over as soon as they see the lights right up behind them I mean it's, it's madness really that A lot of people getting out of their cars. Another ambulance sitting in traffic. There must be transport ambulances. Oh, scimitar. All these jealous people. He's on a bike. It's not fair. You could have a bike. Most of these cars I'm going past have got one person in. You could get on a bike quite easily. I'm being sensible here, look. I could go faster, but I'm not going to. I'm being sensible. I've got a feeling I'm going to get here and they're not going to let be letting cars through. I think the road is completely closed. And here we are at the uh, site. Oh, I'm not the only biker. There's more sitting here. Oh my god, the fire crews are phenomenal. Oh my god, this is not good. And I can hear a helicopter. Bloody hell, this is not good. Not good at all. Jesus Christ. Not good. Well, let's hope they get over to safety. Good God, that car's in bits. Jesus Christ, look, there's the roof and the doors. Oh. I'm going to turn off because I don't want to see anybody. See you on the other side. Okay, so 
they finished, everyone has gone, everyone has been airlifted and out and in ambulances and gone, and now the fire crew are standing around in a bloody circle having a meeting whilst all that traffic just sits there. The police sergeant or whatever she is just got out of that car and had a right go at another Rosa because he let those other two bikers in front of me through. Wouldn't let me through. Um, she got really angry about it. Because it's an active crime scene or an active accident scene, whatever. And so they're just standing around having a meeting now whilst all this traffic is sitting behind. Yes, okay, they've done a fantastic job, I understand that, but do they have to have a meeting at the side of the bloody road to discuss what happened? Or are they going to open it up to suggestions and whilst all the traffic just sits here? Or are they going to have a, a mental health day now, a mental health hour? And then all got to have an interview and a chat. And everything's away, all the equipment's away. <laughs> it's a little bit astounded, really. Just sitting here, waiting. This guy's been here now. <laughs> oh, please. I get they do a brilliant job, I understand that. Fire service, fantastic. But choose your moments, guys. That's it, all disperse. Then what? Yeah, that's it, thumbs up, good, well done, yeah, good job, yeah, brilliant, yes you did give a job. Now off you go. See, there's nothing to stop me going through there apart from a Rosa who can be angry. And because I'm an easy target, nick me for it. <sighs> Get your fire engine off the road. Get your car off the road. And move on. I really do hope the people are alright, they've got airlifted. Surely the idea is to clear the road and get the traffic moving. Not do everything at the side of the damn road. <laughs> I can get through there quite easily. Not allowed. <laughs> Do we just pull it in front of there, get out of the way? Yeah, yeah, no, we're good. See, now what is the problem with me going through there now? There's the other car on its roof. Up the other end. Surely. Just get the traffic moving. I would hate to think how long this tailback is now. I'll put this on fast forward so you can see just how long I'm going to be sitting here. Oh, who's going through? Just open one lane. Pull your Rosa sandwich vehicle over. Oh, okay. Yeah, why not? <laughs> can I follow you? 
Can I follow you? <laughs> Tell you what, I'll ride alongside you, she'll never see me. <laughs> I knew I should have gone a different way. Shouldn't be too much longer. Why? What else you got to do? Not letting those other bikers through. I should have gone with them. So unfair. Unfortunately, I reversed to let the um, fire truck through and they went forward. Typical. Yeah, that's it. I've got a good laugh, yeah. <laughs> Hope you're stopping traffic going home tonight. Right. I'll, I'll tell you when, you can go in a minute. Yeah. But I just gotta wait for someone to go and then I can let you go through if I oh, Okay, thank you. <laughs> Come on. So, I've now been here an hour and a half and now they're finally putting cones up. The armed response unit have just turned up, which is that one there, also medics apparently. And they seem to be on cone duty, because now they're coning off lane one. When I first got here, this guy here had been here an hour and ten minutes. So two and a half hours. And I should imagine one hour forty-five minutes of that have been utterly pointless. Hey! <laughs> Get going in a minute. I've been told that four times. <laughs> Ross, there should be politicians. Economical with their truths. Okay. <sighs> Arm response unit on cone duty. <laughs> he's got a gun strapped to his leg and he's putting out cones. What a farce. What an absolute farce. I would hate to think where the traffic is now. And again, I'm just on a little bike, there's nothing up there, and I could have easily just gone past, I've pushed it past. Right, so I've just pulled over and changed my battery. Um, utterly ridiculous. As you can see, just wasting time unnecessarily. Um, however, I have pulled over to change my battery. Um, and what we're now going to do is do a dual carriageway blast on a flat um, I've done 60 miles so far I was hoping to do um, over 100 miles today but uh, obviously not and I shall get my 360 out in a minute so you can see what these lights look like at night so let's do an acceleration and see how long it takes to get up to 60 Okay, that is a lot. It seems, as I say, once this bike gets warmer, it flies a lot easier. It's not bad. I just um, wish it would be quicker. Let's go the other way, see whether the wind has a difference. Oh, what a
stupid roundabout layout. Bit of a headwind now, and it's definitely affecting me. Come on! Not gonna let me pass? Nope. Yeah, with a headwind, I'm doing 55. Although, Ross has pulled someone else. I'm going to go back the other way again, on the same road. Look at that sunset. Oh, what now? Oh, two police. For what? For that? Are you having a laugh? What is going on? So let's go back, that, back down the other way. Now what? Oh, look at that sunset! What are you doing? Oh my god! is definitely a factor oh, and I'm past 60 now and I couldn't even reach 60 going the other way
So what's the conclusion? Well, for the price point, I think it's a fantastic little bike. It's reliable, it's comfortable. At no point during today did I think, oh, this is starting to hurt at all. I got no buzz through the handlebars. I got a tiny bit of buzz through the foot pegs at 9,000 RPM just before I changed gear. That's it. Um, the seat was very comfortable. Um, the bike was very nimble, very easy to use. And longevity wise on a longer journey, no problems whatsoever. Um, in terms of speed, yes, it'd be nice to have 70 miles an hour. Unfortunately, I think we are in the, the realms of that not being possible, unless, of course, you want to spend between £1,000 and £1,500 more for the likes of a Yamaha YZF, which is a very different bike, or maybe the Husqvarna, um, or perhaps, I mean, even the Husqvarna, I think, only has an on-paper top speed of 65 or so. Um, unless you want to spend a lot more money on a KTM, something like that. Um, for the price point, um, you've got a fantastically built bike, and that's what I like. Very good quality. Um, I think the reliability is going to be there. Um, that QJ motor, uh, that's the same one as the Benelli Leoncino, um, seems a decent engine. Um, I didn't get any problems. It didn't falter one little bit. Um... I ended up doing uh, just over 100 miles in the end. Um, and uh, I'm very pleased. Um, so to answer the question, is it any good as a commuter? If you've got consistent motorway or dual carriageway speeds, probably not brilliant. Unless uh, you're happy, once it's warmed up, you're happy doing 60 slowing down at 55 going uphill. If you are happy with that, then it's a great little bike to get. Um, country roads um, or A roads, absolutely no problem. Really did well, kept up with the traffic, no problem at all. In fact, the traffic held me up. Um, so no dramas there whatsoever. Um, and overall, I really liked it. So I think, yes, as a longer commuter, definitely, definitely a good bike to go for. And that brings me to the end of this episode. Thank you very much for joining me. I'll be back next time with another bike and another car and more on the Mustang. So stay tuned for those. And uh, some news articles coming as well because there's lots of things coming up. Uh, there's some new bikes coming to the fold that I want to get my hands on. Um, and some more stuff I'm waiting for to be delivered. Um, I've still got a bike from MotoGB, um, the DSX 650, that I want out of the way because I want another one coming in. And I want this Peugeot to be picked up because I want something else coming in also. So stay tuned for more. So until next time, please ride and drive carefully, but have fun. Bye-bye.